Hi everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm with the fantastic Bill Hope and we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are streaming and creating from today. And we'd also like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'm glad we made it. We've got, had all these internet issues and everything, but it looks like we're pretty good to go, which is great. Um, welcome back to the stream, Bill. How are you doing? Very well, I'm Flynn. Yeah. Very, very good. It's always nerve, like nerve wracking when like there's always internet issues just before a stream. So we'll see how we roll. Um, yeah. We we got through it on Tuesday, um, but um, yeah, we'll see how we go today. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to uh, get started today. So uh, last uh, Tuesday, uh, we kind of did like a really basic introduction to drawing in Photoshop, which is focusing on the really basic tools, maybe what the experience is in just opening up the program time and want to start sketching. And today I thought we'd try something just a little bit more complicated. So we were just getting the real basics down on Tuesday. You can still find that stream on the YouTube channel my hands. And, uh, today we're going to start drawing a cool scene. So we're going to be using a bit of perspective, drawing some figures, use a bit of reference, all the things that you need to kind of start, I guess, kind of world building or something that's a little bit more fleshed out. So um, as always, if there's any questions, um, no, no questions whatsoever, but anything like and um, we'll get to can. Um, and yeah, in the meantime, I'll I'll get drawing. Okay, well, let's jump over. Um, for everyone, if you're over in Behance, we know the stream might be a little bit choppy today, so just let us know um, how how we go. Make sure you can hear everything. If there's something that you missed, just just let us know. Happy to reiterate it if, if things do jump around a little bit. Um, if you're watching over on YouTube, jump on over to Behance, ask us some questions, let us know how things are going, let us know how you're going. Um, but let's let's jump on over here. So uh, back in Photoshop, it looks like. Yes, yes, absolutely. So hopefully you can see my setup here. I've just got a yep. fresh blank canvas uh, ready to get started. Um, and uh, for the most part today, I'm just going to be using the, the, the most basic brush tool again. So that's number one on the, the, the presets in, in Photoshop. And uh, um, yeah, we're just going to start sketching. So today I kind of had a, a scene in mind um, um, that I'll, I'll start working up. And uh, I think we'll just try and discover some of the tools within Photoshop uh, along the way. Um, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is not technical whatsoever. I'm going to kind of just do a little storyboard for my scene. So before you get into the technical side of any kind of um, um, digital drawing, I think it's really worthwhile to sort of keep some of the, the, the really sort of traditional basics in mind. So even when I'm going to do something that's really technically advanced, maybe I'm going to start with just a really basic sketch. So the drawing I had in mind was uh, going to be someone standing in the foreground, like so, uh, maybe on a bit of a, a cliff edge like this. And they're going to be hailing down kind of a, uh, a big uh, sort of steampunky sort of blimp in the air. So we're going to have a sort of... Uh, um, uh, a kind of blimp here, might have some clouds in the background, a little bit of landscape, something like that. And having just a really quick drawing like this is, is going to be just a useful reference as I go along. So I don't lose sight of kind of what my original vision for the drawing was. So I'm not doing anything, anything fancy at all right here. The only thing I'm doing is I'm holding down shift when I'd like to draw a straight line. And apart from that, I'm just using the standard brush tool. So that's kind of a, a pretty good rough approximation of what I'd like to do there. Um, and I might just use the, uh, the move tool. So that's V on the keyboard um, uh, to move that. I'm just going to pop it up in the corner. I might make it a little bit smaller and press enter to sort of affirm that. And um, yeah, we're good to start sketching. So when you're doing the storyboard or, or do kind of doing the layout sort of really early, in what situation do you like use this approach? Um, like, is it when, cause I know you created books, like you do stuff, all sorts of different types of drawing. So where does this kind of method come in handy? Uh, all the time. I, I, I do it for, for almost everything it starts out as a really rough sketch. And sometimes I like to make sure that I'm doing it on like a really small format because you're kind of deciding on what the big shapes of a drawing are. And, and that's kind of the, the essence of a composition. If you, if you have in mind kind of like what are the real basics of your drawing before you start getting lost too much in the details, probably the main thing I use it for is actual storyboarding. If I'm doing storyboarding for a TV advertisement or something like that. Um, but any kind of drawing I'm doing, it, it always starts as that really loose rough sketch. Mm. Um, cool. Okay. So 
kind of the, it's a pretty simple composition this one um, and the starting line for something like this is going to be the horizon line when you're drawing a scene so what is the the, the point where the sky meets the land basically and for this drawing it's basically right in the middle of the scene so again i'm just holding down shift drawing a big line across the center and everything that i do in this drawing is kind of going to be anchored to that uh horizon horizon line yeah. in many ways um with the the um uh, we we might get a little bit sidetracked into talking about uh perspective on this one which is quite a quite a big subject matter but i'll try and really simplify it for you so um, with this drawing, we want to be able to show that things are disappearing into the distance um, uh, easily. And with that, we're going to use something called single point perspective. And all that means is that all the horizontal lines in this drawing are all going to converge at one point in the horizon. So if I draw a box over here, the lines, the sides of the box are going to converge at that right. single point in the horizon there. Um, so it's really helpful to have uh, kind of these lines emerging out from that single point to, to sort of guide my, my drawing um, throughout, throughout the process. And I could spend all my time sitting there and drawing every single uh, line there, but that's going to be um, a bit of a pain in the neck. So there's a nice, easy way to do this in Photoshop. And for that, we're going to use something called the Shape Tool. Um, the Shape Tool in its most basic version is um, uh, basically, if you want to draw a circle, you can click and drag a circle. You hold down on the shape tool there. Uh, you can draw uh, rectangles. Uh, you can do any kind of shape, and you can sort of preset shapes that you'd like to draw. Um, but I want to draw a star that's got lots and lots of points um, that is going to uh, uh, emerge from the from my vanishing point. So I could draw a big star like that, but there's lots of ways to edit these things. So what I'm going to do is instead of up the, 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 the top bar here, you can see I've got all sorts of ways to change this shape. And what I'm going to do with this one, instead of it having seven sides, I'm going to give it 99 sides, which is the most you can possibly give it. <laughs> right, and, yeah, I was going to ask why 99, okay. Yes, um, and the uh, uh, then I'm going to change the indentation of that just to 1%. And now it's going to draw this start with lots and lots of points in the center. And I'm just going to change the color of that shape to blue maybe. And we're going to draw a really big star there. And now you can see we've got lots of lines coming out, emerging from that one point. And that's going to be a really helpful guide uh, throughout the rest of our drawing. So I'm just going to drop the opacity um, on that layer. So we've got a layer panel on the right. It's just a little tab above the layers that says opacity. And you can just make that layer more transparent because I want to be able to reference it, but I don't want it to sort of be dominating where I'm sketching. So now on a new layer, I'm going to go back to my standard brush and I'm going to start sketching. Um, so I'm just drawing the front of the, the blimp here. And then the sides of the blimp are going to correspond to those lines. You can see right. I'm kind of drawing along those lines there. And that's going to give it a nice good sense that uh, it's, it's disappearing into the distance. And then there's going to be sort of a, a kind of like a carriage underneath the blimp. And I'm not going to worry too much about the um, the details of this. I'm going to just going to draw it as a uh, as a box now. So I've drawn the front of the box just as a rectangle, and again the sides of the box are just following down those lines. Um, and with this, I just want to get the basic shape in. So I'm not going for any kind of fancy detail whatsoever. Um, just deciding what the, the the basic shape of this this blimp is going to be. So just loosely sketching here with a kind of slightly transparent brush because I don't want to over clutter my image at this point. I'm just sort of getting some loose ideas down. So nice. Do um, we, we did have a question from YouTube, uh, for Cody over on YouTube. Um, is it better to use Adobe Illustrator? So we actually talked about it a little, like quite a bit in the previous uh, stream, in the stream we did on Tuesday. Um, like I guess you are asking in the context of digital drawing, um, the most, the most of the artists that we'll have on will we'll use Photoshop. So it might be a little counterintuitive if you're new to Creative Cloud or if you're new to kind of using software and things like that. Um, Illustrator tends to be for vector art, so logo, logo designs, a lot of graphic design, very powerful, scalable graphics like logos and, and things like that. Um, and Photoshop does lots of different things, but it tends to be the go-to tool uh, for digital drawing. Not to say that you can't do it in Illustrator. Uh, we've done streams on that in the past as well, um, but typically Photoshop will have more tools uh, 
a bit faster. Um, it seems to be the standard that most people use. And Bill, if you have any comments on that, please let us know as well. Yeah, no, no, I think that that's absolutely right. I, I mean, I, I find when I'm doing this kind of less sort of uh, precise, loose sketching, um, Photoshop works a lot better for me for, for, for that kind of thing. Um, and, and then if I need something to be really sort of technically uh, measured and on point, uh, I find Illustrator a bit more useful for that, but it's sort of each to their own for that kind of thing. Um, so I've just continued to sketch away, but um, uh, please, if there's any more questions, do, do let me know. Um, and again, I'm just drawing a little boat down here. And again, same thing. Um, I'm just making sure that those lines correlate with the, um, the, the, the lines directed towards the vanishing point. It's a really cute little boat. Thanks, thanks. Often <laughs> if I'm drawing a boat like this, I mean, I've kind of drawn that one freehand, but I'll show you something that I often do. If you're drawing a complex shape, like say I, I knew I wanted a boat and the top of the boat is going to be, so if we were sort of looking at that boat from a bird's eye view, um, uh, it, it is quite hard to draw shapes like that in correct perspective. Mm. And a way that you can kind of cheat it digitally is say I've drawn half of the, the, the boat shape from the top there. I'm just going to flip that, um, that image along so I've got sort of the, the full top of the boat there. And then I can walk that shape along the lines of perspective that I've already drawn. So say I was doing another boat over here. If I use the, the move tool, uh, which is this little cross over in the top uh, left-hand corner of your, your tools panel, I can move it around. And if I right click on that shape, I can do a perspective walk. So now I'm going to drag the shape and I'm going to warp it just so the box surrounding it matches the lines of this perspective. That That's I've got really cool. Yeah, and um, it makes it a whole lot easier. Now I can change the shape of it still, but the lines are still going to match up with the lines of perspective that we've drawn. Mm. And now I know that my boat is perfectly in perspective, and I can just press enter, and that's that's where it is. And then I can sort of finish off the rest of the boat there, and I kind of know um, that, it, that it's that it's nicely matched up. And I really like that. Things, yeah, yeah. There's lots of things you can do along the way to sort of take take these really technical concepts and sort of simplify them with, with some, some basic tools. There's nothing I like more than like to know that something is technically exactly right, like with, with within design, like knowing that something is exactly 10 by 10 pixels or yeah, you know, I've, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've used the computer rather than my eye to make sure that it's technically, I know that there's nothing wrong with it. And then I tend to want to kind of copy that and paste it. So I, I'm just kind of idiot proofing it for myself. Yes, yeah, well, I mean, there's only so much you can do. I had a job recently where a client wanted me to draw a perspective of a room where you could see all four sides of the room. And right. it was very difficult to try and explain. There's no way to technically draw <laughs> all four sides of the room in one go and have it look correct. Wow. Uh, we got there eventually, but it required a little bit of sort of uh, creative, creative thinking. Along Did the way. you make like two of the walls transparent and do like a 3D thing? Uh, no, that's a good idea. Uh, it ended up being kind of like a, um, I'll try and quickly sketch it up, kind of like a, a uh, if you ever see one of those like panorama photos where it, it takes a 360 image and then it pans together, um, the walls all start curving and moving together. So you can kind of draw all the walls slightly warped, but joining up and then mm. bits of the floor. I don't know. I won't go into it too much. It was very confusing. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, that, that's to, great. I'll, I'll just use this question. little pause pause in our chat to, to swap over. Johanna is going to take over hosting um, for now, so I'll I'll bow out and let her jump in. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Flynn. Cool. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Well, hopefully Joanna is with us soon. Um, and and uh, here I am. Go. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, I think this might be an Adobe Live first of the uh, transitioning host halfway through. Um, Exactly. Which is an We're pioneering the, the the design live stream uh, industry today. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be the same again. Um, anyway, no, lovely never. to have you with us, Joanna. Um, yeah, so we've just been uh, working away on this this composition here, um, and uh, I was just about to start adding this this figure um, in the foreground. Um, Fantastic. So, yeah, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, using reference or, or um, starting with reference in, in Photoshop. Um, I do use reference all the time, but we've talked plenty on this stream before about sort of the, some of the pros and cons of using too much reference sometimes. But mm. it's, it's always a useful thing to have there. 
So I've um, gone and found uh, just a couple stock images on the internet that I want to use. Um, and I've kind of got a rough approximation of what I want uh, my figure in the foreground uh, to look like. So you can just drag and drop JPEGs into Photoshop. They'll just appear as a layer in the, in the file. And uh, there are all sorts of ways that you can have sort of uh, reference visible all the time on screen, but I prefer to just have them as, as part of the composition itself. Um, and I can, I can reference them when I want. So you could uh, sort of drop this figure into place there and um, uh, draw over the top of it, or sort of copy it. Um, but it's not something I like to do too often, and this is a copyrighted image, so we're not going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to have it sort of off to the side there, and I'll start sketching kind of loosely based on that, not sort of uh, completely copying that, that pose, but just using it as a, as a bit of a, a touchstone for me about maybe the proportions of this figure, um, maybe uh, what the, the arm is doing when it's raised like that. I want this figure to be kind of um, uh, hailing, hailing down this, this blimp in the distance. Um, again, like we talked about yesterday, as I'm drawing this figure, I'm constantly holding down Z, Z on the keyboard, which is the, um, the zoom tool. And I'm kind of moving in and out when I need to be closer to something to draw it more accurately and then zooming out when I want to get a bit of perspective on the whole body. So as I zoom out a little bit there, I realize the legs look way too short to, to be in proportion. So I'm just going to draw those down a little bit further. I'm going to put some basic lines in um, for the, the legs. And uh, yeah, that's that's coming together OK. Um, I might just shrink down the head a little bit. So I'm going to press L on the keyboard and use the lasso tool so I can just make a little selection there. I'm going to press V for the move tool. And again, I'm just, just making little adjustments. I'm going to shrink it down. I'm going to rotate a little bit. Press enter to leave that there. And one of the things I love about uh, digital sketching is just the, the freedom to easily erase and move things around, especially when you're at this stage of the drawing. Um, you've just got total freedom to control those things. So I'm always just kind of making little adjustments as I go until something starts to, to feel right. Let's see, yep. I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Bill, but it seems that on the stream you are frozen. So I'm going to quickly do a hide and seek uh, to see if that resets uh, your stream. Uh, so yep. hang tight, everyone. Bill will be right back. Let's see, that has hopefully fixed the issue. Um, we'll know in a couple of seconds on the stream. Fantastic. That's all coming through you okay, Jenna? It is coming through uh, perfect for me, um, but looking at the stream on, on Behance and YouTube, sadly you are frozen. Um, but I think uh, in a couple more seconds we will know if the, if the reset has worked. Let's see. No worries. It would appear it has not. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, just let me know if there's anything you'd like me to, to do. Yes, of course. And apologies for the laughter. Um, Flynn made a, a comment here in the chat of pretty much akin to when it rains, it pours. Um, yes. And that is sadly the theme for today. But um, I might, if you won't take too much offense, just hide you for the moment uh, till mm -hmm. maybe... Uh, your camera has decided to cooperate and <laughs> lucky for everyone else in the stream, um, it'll just be me now on camera, which is such a delight. Um, but going back to the drawing, I did have um, a sort of a, a question and a, and a remark. It's interesting how, because uh, we were speaking with uh, Delba Jenny the other day and how he uses reference and it's interesting how you use it the same but also very different and I know that's extremely vague but your approach is having it on the side and sort of interpreting the reference while Dale will use it sort of as the building blocks and the skeleton um, and I'm wondering have you ever tried that approach or um, have you um, sort of always had it on, on the side? Uh, sorry just checking you can hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you okay. Okay, great. Um, 
Uh, yes, no, I've certainly done it the way that, that Dale does it, and there's no uh, right or wrong way about these things. Mm. Um, just checking, can you see my, um, uh, my Photoshop screen? Absolutely, I can see everything except your lovely face, I'm afraid. Ah, right. um, okay, well, but... that's awesome. We don't need... <laughs> <laughs> you are back. I have sadly, or not sadly, I have put your camera back on to see if it has reset it, but it seems like it has not. Unfortunately, I will have to keep your your frozen uh, face on the screen. Otherwise, we can't hear you. Um, but <laughs> that's okay. Well, I hope I'm not making too awful a, uh, a grimace uh, with my, no. my frozen face. You're um, all good. I, I, I feel like sort of the uh, boy that uh, made faces in the wind and was trapped forever. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, we were talking about reference. Um, yeah, no, I've definitely uh, drawn things in the in the the, the way that you were um, saying that uh, Dale does, and I think there's there's no right or wrong way of, of going about these things. Um, uh, and sometimes, if you want something to be really accurate, or if you're drawing something like a uh, a car or something that is that is technically uh, quite challenging to draw accurately, but um, um, very easy to find reference for, then something like that's definitely a uh, a really good way to go but um, I, I worry sometimes that I become sort of too reliant on um, on the, um, the the reference so mm. for, for instance with something like um, uh, this character here that, that's flagging down the, the blimp um, I could certainly I would probably end up with a more accurate drawing if I were to copy the, the reference exactly um, but uh, the uh, I don't know if I have a sort of complete control over the the expression or the, the style that I'd like to draw with. So I think it would be quite fun if this character had sort of a, a big suitcase that they were holding. Um, um, and certainly you could draw most of it based on the reference and then just add a little bit at the end to um, uh, sort of um, add a bit more uh, flair to it. Mm -hmm. But often those things just don't uh, sort of appear in your mind if you, if you become sort of... Uh, uh, sort of too, too um, wedded to the reference that you have. Um, and I think also you sort of end up with uh, sort of a degree of imperfection when you're not using reference that uh, is a bit free, freeing sometimes. You sort of uh, you give yourself space to make mistakes. Um, and in the times when I've, I've used a lot of reference, sometimes you sort of um, you put a sort of unrealistic standard of perfection on your on yourself uh, in your drawings, and I, I personally find that a little restrictive sometimes. But um, um, a lot of people use it to, to great effect. Hmm. It's interesting this this balance between you know creating a. I don't want to use the word perfect because only very 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 few things are perfect. But having the the comparison and the balance of. Uh, while using reference or sort of while trying to, I guess, replicate something, how in some ways it becomes less, less accurate because it is like a, almost a carbon copy uh, of what you're looking at. And uh, as we know with most nature and, and humans, nothing is quite exactly um, the same. Uh, I'd yeah, like to think yeah. anyway. So it, it yeah. makes it feel a little bit more alive perhaps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean, it, it's, it works with different styles, though, because I mean, with someone like uh, Dale's work, Dale has such a strong personal style mm. that um, uh, he sort of adds certainly enough of his own kind of inherent flair and style to the pictures that you're, you're under no question of who, who made it. It's definitely Dale's work. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think that, that process, um, yeah, really works for him. For sure. And... Uh, of course, if anyone else uh, in the chat has questions, feel free to to post them. Uh, we can't, well, we can go on with all my questions, but I'd love to hear from you if you have any. Um, but one one similar question that I'll, I'll continue us on with is, this approach is obviously, um, you know, you're working with perspective and what? how many points of perspective uh, was this again? Uh, it's just one, so I'm keeping one it nice point. and simple today. So that was a that was a vanishing point there, um, and um, uh, yeah. So we're just working with that one today. Fantastic! And is one point perspective usually um, what you'll draw from? 
Oh, it really depends on the picture. I mean, something like <laughs> this, uh, it, it's just a quite a simple setup of the, the horizon with the figures in the foreground. That's kind of all that you need, but um, uh, we could certainly do it in uh, a much more. I, I think things, the more points of perspective that you add, the more three-dimensional things start to feel. Um, uh, but I thought for, for something um, relatively straightforward like this, I'd, I'd, I'd keep it. I'd keep it just to just to one. Once you get to sort of uh, two and three point perspective, it, it, it becomes um, quite a, quite a sort of um, challenge understanding what's what's, mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, Absolutely, get lost yeah, in the. Yeah. Uh, oh, I had the thing. Uh, I was going to make an Inception reference somehow, but it is gone. Uh, so let me. <laughs> So how would this technique differ? Would it be the exact same if you were drawing uh, from isometric perspective, which is something that you do uh, quite often as well? Oh yeah, no, 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 it would be, uh, it would be totally different. I mean, um, uh, everything is um, uh, sort of seen at the same scale within isometric drawing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the wonderful thing about perspective is I can fit a giant blimp and a detailed person into the same picture. Whereas if I was drawing this isometrically, I would need to draw uh, a blimp um, here, and our figure would have to be yeah, if I was drawing scale tiny. <laughs> like, like like this. Um, and it, I mean, for some things that's going to work, but um, uh, but for most of the time, um, uh, it's not going to be a particularly dramatic shot. Um, and and when you've got sort of things pointing in all kinds of directions, it adds quite a lot more drama. Um, one thing that a lot of people do is, if I put my perspective back on, is they kind of draw clouds based on the perspective as well. So mm, I could draw some oh, clouds yeah. that are kind of dis di disappearing into the distance and kind of loosely following the, those lines of perspective. So I might have some more coming down and, and following those lines. And oh. something like that already starts to sort of like open up the sky and give you a sense of sort of scale and and a, uh, a, a broad landscape there. Um, yeah. Once you kind of put those perspective lines in and you start drawing, one of the one of the fantastic things is that sort of everything kind of aligns to those same rules. So I've been drawing this this uh, figure rowing the boat here, and um, uh, the oars are going to sort of uh, roughly line up with perspective. The the top of his knee is pointing in the direction of the vanishing point, so mm. the, the the legs are going to line up with that, and you can just use it as this kind of constant guide. And as you can see, I'm drawing on top of my old drawing um, that, I, that I've got on the previous layer. And that's just allowing me to add uh, a little bit more detail each kind of iteration that, that I go along. So I might add one of those sort of flotation devices here or something hanging off the boat <laughs> there. And I can, I can keep sort of adding detail the, the further I go. And then I can delete my previous layer and iterate again and sort of continue, continue on. There you go. Well, speaking of, of iteration, I, I promise this is the last attempt uh, we will make, but if you could uh, turn off your camera and then turn it back on again, uh, the classic IT crowd uh, fix. Let's see if that works. Um, okay. Hopefully in a few seconds we will know. Um, okay. But we've actually got a, a great question from, from Manny here in the chat, um, which is how did you adjust the angle of the arm? um a few a few minutes ago. Uh, right okay uh yeah that's a good question um so i've just uh used the lasso tool which is um just under the move tool at the top it's the the, the lasso shaped icon there mm -hmm. and i'm just drawing around so i'm just making a selection of the arm and then i can kind of edit that and move it as i like so i'm using the move tool now which is a v on the keyboard but what I did previously was I was rotating the arm. I wanted to bring it down a little bit. But if I start to rotate it, um, it works fine. But it, you sort of see that she's dislodged her shoulder there in quite a bad way, oh, no. um, which isn't which isn't uh, very healthy. But what I can do fatal is blow. that uh, yes, definitely a fatal blow. What I can do is there is um, uh, this little sort of uh, circular icon within the, the move tool. You can see this this little um, target shape. And when I move that, the object will scale based on that target shape, but it'll also rotate based on that target shape. So when I'm moving the arm, I know the joint is kind of within her shoulder at that point. Mm. Now when I rotate the arm, it rotates nicely based on kind of how a human would move. And I find that a, a really useful way to kind of edit my figures. 
Um, so uh, yeah, I could do the same thing with the arm or the head, and I kind of just place that anchor point wherever is wherever it's helpful. Um, yeah. So if there's anything else like that, please please do let me know. Fantastic. Um, one thing yeah. I was doing before, um, I might pull up a, a bit of other reference. So this reference here, I'm obviously not using as um, uh, sort of, it's not exactly the same, but I'm kind of using, I like this drawing and I want to use it as sort of a bit of a style reference. So I'll start mm. adding some detail to our blimp. But one thing I was doing before, which is a helpful little trick within Photoshop is say I'm drawing this curve of um, the, the, the blimp here. It's quite difficult to get exactly the curve that I want. And there's a couple ways around this. Um, the first way is uh, to just draw the shape. So I kind of try and draw it in one smooth line. Mm -hmm. And then I can use the move tool on that shape to kind of edit that line to get it just in the place that I want. And the way yeah. that I usually do that is to right click and use warp. And now I can kind of just drag the line exactly into the position I want it to be. And as long as I've got something that's like 80% of the way there on the first go, I can kind of um, edit that line to make it fit exactly where I want. Another way to do that is if I start again, um, when, you're, when you're using the brush, there's something uh, at the top uh, called smoothing. And basically what that does is it takes all the kinks out of your line. So it makes it nice and slow and mm. smooth. So I can't really draw a, a, a really chaotic line with that because the computer's kind of taking all the kinks out of it for me. And that's a really nice way of uh, kind of getting that perfect, nice, smooth, straight line. You can kind of use that in combination with the warp to get exactly yeah. the line that you want. If you're feeling extremely pedantic and would like it to be absolutely perfect, you can go ahead and use the pen tool. Pen tool is kind of a whole other um, uh, uh, course, I suppose, to, Experience to get uh, your lines exactly right. Um, and to be honest, I have not used the pen tool uh, much of my time. So um, <laughs> it's something I'm, I'm, I'm still sort of um, uh, very, very rapidly learning how to do, but it's a, it's a great way to um, uh, find a way to edit your, your lines and get them into exactly the position you want. So you have a lot mm. more flexibility to move those things around. Personally, I, I don't use the pen tool a great deal because I like to work quite fast. And some people are very good at the pen tool and, and can sort of really hammer these things out. But um, I, I find it's kind of slows down the sort of natural flow of how I like to draw. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not a go-to tool for me. But I have started using it more and more, to be honest, because uh, I'm getting sort of, uh, yeah, sometimes you just you just want the, the line to be exactly the right one. Um, very true. Yeah. And and when you do use the uh, the warp, does that change the, um, pardon me, does that pixelate the, the line in any way? Or, or is it just as crisp as the, the original line that you warped sort of into place? Uh, look, it does pixelate it a tiny bit. Um, mm. I'm usually working at a, at a pretty high resolution, so it, it, it gives it a tiny bit of fuzz, but so little that it's, it's very hard to notice. Um, Photoshop's pretty good at retaining sort of the information um, within, with, within the line. So it's not, it's not a big consideration. Um, um, yeah, it's, uh, um, so yes, yes a tiny bit, but it's not, not a big deal. Yeah, a little bit, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll show you one other trick that I use all the time when I'm when I'm drawing, um, and it's just a way to uh, kind of select the areas that you would like to work in. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, I'm, I'm kind of doing the the front of the blimp, and I put this kind of stitching pattern along there, and I'd like to draw a line that goes underneath all the stitches there. But it would be, a, I'd either have to draw them sort of segment by segment, but I want it to be a nice smooth line that goes mm. around all those things. And a really easy way to go about that is to use the magic wand tool, which is just a little bit down and to the right from uh, the move tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just select, you can just click and it's going to select all the empty pixels um, uh, within a, a sort of certain enclosure. So now I can draw normally, but it's not going to let me draw over that section that's selected. And I do that all the time to just sort of like, I could draw my line now uh, and then click off the selection and it's just drawn underneath all of those stitches. And there's just lots of little things like that that kind of really speed up your, 
their process and, and make, make drawing easier. So I'm putting this kind of, um, although it's going to be a sort of a spike coming out of the front of the blimp, but I might try and actually make that a bit more detailed. So I'm going to turn on um, the, uh, um, oh, where's it gone? Um, I'm going to turn on the uh, symmetry tool. Um, I'm, I'm losing, ah, here it is. So I've turned on the symmetry tool, which we used a little bit in the last stream. And I'm just going to make a kind of exciting shape that I'd like wow. to use for the for the front of our um, um, for the front uh, of our blimp. Let's turn yeah. that symmetry tool off. Now again, I'm going to just grab grab that object, and I'm going to rotate it and warp it, uh, sort of to match the the, the the front. So again, I'm just going to um, warp it a little bit based on the lines that we've had at the mm -hmm. front. I'm going to put it in place. And now I've got a, a much more interesting shape on the front of my, my blimp. Amazing. Um, I will admit. This... Oh, you go. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I'm actually still quite amazed with the, the magic wand tool uh, with selecting, because what I would have done is I would have uh, drawn the sort of the circle line somehow um, and then gone back and erased in uh, sort of where all that stitching is or had it on two different layers but that that's that's something i'm going to try this weekend this method instead. yeah yeah it's just one of these things that speed it up and again i'm going to do it within i want to just draw within the shape so again i'm just going to use the magic wand tool i'm going to start adding a bit of detailing here and it's great because i just don't have to worry about getting the edges quite right because mm. i can only draw within that shape would you say that it's somewhat similar to using uh layer masks um except that it's line work based instead. Yeah, yeah, it's just a really rough way of um, doing layer masks. Like if I was doing something uh, uh, like right now, I'm just doing what I'd call kind of the, the sketch stage of it. Um, so I'm not too concerned about um, um, the it being exact. So that's kind of just like a rough quick way. I probably would use a mask if I was doing the inking of, of that section. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to try and do something a little bit wacky here. We've got this, this uh, side of the ship here, which is quite a, um, a complex shape. And I want to start adding quite a bit of detail to that, but I'm wanting to work quickly. And I just know that this shape, this ship shape would be, ship shape, um, would be easier if I was drawing it on its side. Um, it's just going to be easier to do a bunch of things with it. So instead of drawing it all on an angle, I'm just going to draw it all as if we were looking at the ship from, from its side. Mm. So I'm going to draw a couple lines in there. We'll put some spaces for cannons in. And I'll add a bit of detailing along the top there. I'm just trying to knock out a little bit. Again, I'm just going to make another selection from the Magic Wand tool and I'll draw something that's sort of akin to planks, I guess, like it's uh, made of wood. Um, we'll put a little porthole in there, a race <laughs> there. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe we'll put some of those sort of um, pirate style windows in the back of this. Um, uh, so we'll put some in like that. All right, that's looking okay. And now again, we're going to use sort of the um, magic cheating power of, of Photoshop to um, <laughs> warp this into place and save ourselves a bunch of time. So I'm going to put some kind of like paddle things coming out mm. there. Now I'm going to use the, the lasso tool again to select that whole side of the ship. And we're just going to move it into place. And now I'm going to change the width and height of it uh, using the move tool. And again, we're going to go to perspective now. And I'm going to start warping it so it matches the perspective lines. Oh. Um, and that's going to give and us And is sort that of... the, the skew? Tool instead. Uh, no, it's um, it's uh, it's perspective. So if you right click, it's so there's skew, I distort, see. and perspective, which mm. makes it easy. Now again, you can see that's kind of got us 80% of the way, but we still have a little bit of work to do. So now I'm going to right click again and click on uh, warp. Mm. Now I'm going to start sort of bending it into place. I'm going to try and give it a bit more of that um, bulge that the, the 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 lines of the ship would have. Um, and just sort of bringing those bits into, into order. All right, that's looking okay. And we'll just sort of finish out uh, the, the rest of the ship coming off there. I'd have to say this is truly a sort of a picture perfect example of work smarter 
not harder or, or you know, use the, the, the benefits of the technology to your advantage. Uh, I think, yeah. you know, there's people that will say that that drawing digitally is quote unquote easier. Um, and I just think that the tools available uh, are different. But truly, this is this is a great way of, I guess, demystifying how complex some things might be to draw, um, yeah, and how long definitely. they might take to draw. Um, yeah, there's always a way of breaking it down. Sorry, mm. you're gonna say? Oh, and just making it fun. That that was the last yeah. bit I was gonna say. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I really love sort of finding these little efficiencies, so you can really sort of work quickly and knock things out. Um, it's something I, I I really enjoy in the process. And kind of my, my, one of the sort of philosophies I have with, when it comes to uh, digital drawing is that computers are basically really good at duplicating things. Like mm. they can duplicate things all day with no wastage and it's a very easy thing to do. So a lot of the efficiencies that you can find within doing anything digitally is just finding a way of doing everything once. You sort of don't need to if you're using an object multiple times, you don't need to draw it every time. You can sort of duplicate it, or if I'm drawing the planks, I can duplicate those. Uh, it's uh, And I'll show you just a little example of that now. So I've kind of drawn this kind of abstract shape. Let me just put that on its own layer. So I've got this abstract shape, and I want to make some kind of wings coming off the side of this ship. And uh, I'm going to be warping it in a couple different ways to make those, those wings. So I'm going to keep a copy of this basic shape. So I'm just going to duplicate that shape there by holding down Option. <laughs> now I'm going to take it, and again, like we were doing before, I'm using the Perspective Warp tool to line it up with those line, those blue lines that we've got going to our horizon. And I'm just going to warp it by changing again the hit, the height and width until it's in the in the position that I want. So that's that's feeling okay. Now. A three-dimensional field. So I'm just going to grab. So I'm going to use the lasso tool to draw that edge. Instead of drawing that line again perfectly, I'm just going to uh, duplicate just that, that line, and I've just given it that little bit of height there. Huh. Now um, I've got my my three-dimensional wing, and I can just uh, select the outside of that um, outside of that wing going to invert that selection and then I'm just going to delete it underneath. And that's just a quick way to sort of add uh, something that looks quite technically challenging onto my drawing nice and quickly. And as I said before, I was going to leave uh, one of those uh, sections free because I'm going to add one on the other side. So again, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to warp this uh, fin a little bit and I can kind of imagine where it would be on the other side of the ship this way. Um, let's get it into a position that feels right. And again, I'm going to do just the same thing. So I've got my lasso tool. I'm going to lasso that edge there. I'm going to hold down Option and duplicate it so it makes it 3D. And now that I've got that, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that behind the, behind the ship. And then quite quickly, we've got a sort of technically accurate couple of uh, wings coming off our ship there. Um, and that's starting to look kind of cool. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I think it looks very cool, actually. Awesome. Um, but speaking of warp time, time warps, you know, all that timey wimey stuff, uh, we do have about yeah. 12, maybe 10, 10 to be safe minutes to go. Um, so if there are any last uh, beginner tips for, for making up a scene that you want to cover, um, that's the amount of time you have. No worries. Um, well, I mean, we've got, kind of covered a little bit of uh, basic um, um, warping things to perspective and, and uh, drawing out a, a, a larger scene. We've talked about sort of horizons and matching some of the horizons. Um, one thing that I will, um, one sort of uh, quick tip that I will, I will give people, which I wish I'd known a long time ago, is that if you've got a series of uh, human beings that you're drawing, um, uh, into uh, into a scene, their heads are usually going to line up roughly with the uh, horizon line. And if you're drawing mm -hmm. someone smaller, you're kind of just lining up. If you imagine um, uh, a line going from the top of the head and the top of their toe to the horizon, if you're drawing someone in the in the distance, you kind of just line everything up that way, and they'll kind of sit within the scene. 
Um, if you're drawing someone up here, over here, you kind of have to draw them on uh, top of a ladder or a platform or something like that, or is they're going to just feel like they're floating in space. So there's a few little things like that that help sort of like anchor people down into the reality of the scene that you're drawing. Um, yeah, um, I might just add a couple more details to that, but if there's any last questions, please drop them in the chat and I'll do what I can to, to answer them. Of course, of course. Um, let's see, just reading through the chat and also hello uh, to the new folks that have joined us. Of course, we have Annika and we have Michael as well. I'm just scrolling up to see if there's any that I've missed. I don't believe so, um, but if you've just tuned in and you haven't uh, posted in the chat, um, now is the time to ask any final questions. Um, let's see, actually we do, I believe, have a question from Flynn, but before Flynn's very serious and important question, I uh -huh. want to ask a silly one. And yeah, sure. um, this airship blimp is kind of giving, you know, steampunk pirate vibes. So my question to you, Bill, is do you have a favorite, favorite, wow, no, not English today, favorite, I should say, um, pirate movie my favorite pirate movie uh, i mean i was such a fan of the um uh original pirates of the caribbean ones mm -hmm. and i know they became sort of like kind of uh trashy movies as they went on but um i went to disneyland when i was a kid and and, and did the pirates of the caribbean ride so i've always had sort of a bit of a soft spot in 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 my mind for for, for the early ones of those movies but the only addition that i would put into that would just be um um oh god i'm gonna forget his name anyway um whoever played uh hook in the the hook movie that was a sort of a um, ah. um uh, a bit of a uh, um an original text of my my youth um pirates from the hook movie yeah what about you joanna Fantastic. Well, this, this of course, was an excuse for me to brag the fact that I saw The Princess Bride uh, for the first time the other day. And that features... Oh, by really? Not, um, not really visually featuring, but definitely by name. Um, and yeah, that movie is top five movie uh, of all time for me now. So it is really very good. That was that. another one that I watched, yeah, a hundred times um, as a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good one. It's been a while though. I should go back and watch it. Should watch it again. I'll, I mean, I would definitely watch it again this weekend if I could. Um, but to sort of circle back to, uh, or sail back into shore, uh, so to speak, to a more serious <laughs> question, uh, we yeah. have from Flynn. Where do you get your references? Do you keep them on file or search as you need? Um, well, to, to be completely honest, uh, I just kind of uh, Googled these uh, sort of uh, a couple minutes before we, we got on the stream. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, Google's definitely your friend um, uh, when, when it comes to, to finding reference. But um, like everything on the internet, Google kind of just sends you to the most uh, popular, popular mm. things. Um, and um, uh, so you end up kind of with generic reference, which might turn into doing a kind of generic drawing. Um, uh, so the weirder and more interesting and specific reference that you can find is um, always going to give you the best stuff. And um, for that, I have quite a collection of sort of uh, art reference books. And some of my favorite ones are, um, I've got collections of illustrated encyclopedias from like the 1800s and they're fantastic because it's some illustrator that's having to draw basically everything in the known world at the time mm. and often not with very good reference themselves <laughs> so i've got these illustrated encyclopedias that will have like here's every fish that we know about in the world and the illustrator has obviously drawn them based on written descriptions mm -hmm. so his crocodiles and whales and stuff look totally wrong they look nothing like an actual animal, but they're really weird and sort of uncanny and interesting. And I love finding really specific things like that that, that become really great reference for drawing weird stuff. So Amazing. I think I think the most obscure reference you can find is is probably going to be the for your benefit. The best yeah. one, yeah. Oof, you've just given me a fantastic idea for a stream, so thank you very much. Um, really we're going nice. to have to have you back for that one, and that's all I will say about it. Um, but speaking of stream, or oh, actually just before, it was Dustin Hoffman, I believe, who played Hook in, um, 
in the one. So thanks Google and Flynn uh, for letting us know. Um, we do have about four to three minutes left. Um, so my last question to you um, is one that I thought I had in my brain, but then completely lost. It's all good. Any final tips? That was what I was going to ask. Oh, any final tips? Um, uh, I think um, I, I would just encourage people if they're starting to do digital drawing is to not try and move too fast. Like mm. get a couple of tools that you're, you're used to. So just get like, say the brush tool and the move tool and uh, an eraser and some layers and just kind of sit with those for a while. And you'll, you'll kind of naturally get a bit of a sense of the more complicated tools that you need. I think if you if you learn too much of a program too quickly, you almost get lost in the technicalities of it. Mm. I think if you kind of keep it basic when you're when you're learning and 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 try and focus on sort of like what's your style, what's what kind of things do you like to draw, all that kind of stuff first, the technical things will kind of come naturally uh, to you as as you go along. Mm. Um, uh, so. Um, uh, there's there's lots of amazing tips and tricks to make things interesting, but I would focus on having a solid practice in uh, drawing or design or whatever you enjoy first before um, you get too stressed about having the the most sort of technical knowledge. Yeah, that would be my final final tip. That's a great final tip, and if I may, I would only just add to that to uh, to have fun as well, because uh, what's the point otherwise? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So enjoy what you draw, have fun, and uh, try new things. Now, the stream is just about over, um, but for those that want to see more of you, Bill, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, right, well, if you uh, just Google Bill Hope and Adobe, you'll find lots of videos like this that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, or you can uh, find me on my website or at, at billhope underscore art on Instagram. Fantastic. And I'm sure Finn will post links to that in chat as well. Excellent. I've seen him do that just now. Uh, in that case, without further ado, thank you so, so much, Bill, for joining us, uh, for persevering through the technical difficulties and pioneering the, uh, the host switch. I, I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining us. No worries. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, for joining in. And thank you so much, Joe, for hosting. It's been fun. Absolutely my pleasure. Um, that's it for us. We'll be back next week with more ex exciting streams, of course. Uh, my English might be better by then. Who knows? Um, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.